did can get and uh, get the Ethereum Foundation to sell about uh, seventy thousand ETH, like basically at the top, and that's doubled our runway now. So, GM, and welcome back to the channel for this Shanghai video update here. So, we're going to discuss what the heck is Shanghai, how's it going to work, what's the potential effects on ETH, second order effects around some liquid staking derivatives. And is this bullish or bearish overall? So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're new. Let's jump in. So as you can see from this website here, whenmerge.com. Well, when merge is specifically two days, one hour, 53 minutes and nine seconds away from right about now. So cool little website that's been put up here. Go and give it a check out. But what the heck is going on here? So the Shanghai fork known as the Chappella upgrade will implement EIP, that is Ethereum Improvement Proposal 4895. So this sees withdrawals from the beacon chain go live. So this actually makes ETH a full POS chain. So fully proof of stake from this moment in time, as obviously you can state your ETH, unstate your ETH, all happy days. But there are some nuances around this. There are some withdrawal delays, etc. Only so many people can actually withdraw at one moment in time. Anyway, individuals have been staking the ETH as far back as December of 2020, when ETH was fairly cheap back then. So individuals who were staking back in December of 2020, either ETH maxis, in my opinion, or individuals who are, you know, quite well versed in the DeFi space, they knew how to actually go about doing the staking process. It's not as easy back then as it is today in terms of staking your Ethereum. And this states that around 14%, I think this is as high as 16% of all ETH is currently staked on the beacon chain, accounting for about $30 billion worth of value. And the fork also enables other improvement proposals, which will help reduce gas costs for ETH developers. So Shanghai update coming on the 12th of April there. And then the next one, if you've got an eye on the future, EIP 4844 with proto dank sharding facilitates the sharding process, L2s and bridges, TLDR. So once the Shanghai upgrade has happened, there's two ways you can actually take out your ETH. You can take out just the rewards or you can take out the full stack as well. So two specific breakdowns here. So shout out to Ryan here for this little thread. So staking rewards only. If you want to just withdraw your staking rewards, this is the easiest process. And currently there's an accrued 1.1 million staking rewards. Also on the when merge website, if you just scroll down here, you can also see the current rewards on the beacon chain, 1.128 million ether. So these can potentially start to be unstaked from the 12th of April. You're going to get 100% of those unlocked straight out the gates. They're your rewards, but this is the first time those have been actively withdrawable from the beacon chain. So you can see from the stats down here, there's currently about a half a million validators on the network. And so a lot of people potentially wanting to withdraw those rewards, maybe cash them out, maybe spin up some more nodes with the rewards you've accrued. The withdrawal limit for this every 12 seconds, so every new block, this will enable 16 validators to exit, the equivalent of 115,200 validators per day. So this comes down to the following math. If all of the rewards want to be withdrawn, that is a total of half a million validators exiting, it will take roughly five days to do so, and we'll see around $400 million worth of ETH hit the markets at current price if that were to be cashed out. So that is the math on the withdrawal of rewards only. However, part two here is if you want to do a full withdrawal. So the second option, there is a vesting period, roughly 27 hours worth of Q is the estimate here. The limit is eight validators per epoch. So the maths on this is roughly 1800 validators would be able to withdraw their entire assets each day. But as more get withdrawn, this actually reduces by one validator per epoch for every 65,000 validators withdrawing. So this table that Ryan put together is rather useful here. So it shows you it would take 11 days to actually exit 3% of all the state ETH. 52 days to exit 16% and so to actually unlock the full amount of ETH. So in worst case scenario, everyone wants to withdraw, get back all their Ethereums. We hate Ethereum right now. Dump it all to oblivion, sell it all. Well, this will take 18 months to get through the queue or to be specific, around 523 days. You can see the average US dollar value at current prices of this actually reduces over time because there's like that 
bottleneck where it's actually reducing the number of withdrawers per epoch. So in summary, there's a lot of things to think about with this. Of course, not everyone's gonna wanna do the exact same thing. It's very hard to model these things. All we can do is put best guesses on this and have a little look at some of these various workings that individuals in the crypto space have put together. So another one to look at here is this from Mark Zeller. So he's more on the bullish side that this isn't gonna have any bearish impact on price or you know people don't really wanna exit their staked ETH positions, he's saying. So he says, look, you can actually withdraw your state ETH right now and put it into the queue to mean you'll be first out of the line. He says zero real stakers are panicking though. People are not actually trying to exit. If you just go back to the when merge website again, you can see the validator exiting queue is at zero. So this is the kind of data he's pulling here. What happens if you exit now? Well, if you were to exit now, you won't earn the next two days worth of rewards. That's around $4.50 per node. So obviously not a lot. And then when Shanghai comes about, you get to exit with your 32 ETH and get back all of your yield. Anyone can do that right now, but he's saying, look, case closed, no one's bloody doing it. His chart shows a grand total of 1622. So 1,622 validators have exited so far and the withdrawal queue is packed with zero. So total departures currently is 51,000 Ethereum that could be hitting the markets on the 12th of April. So why could this be? Well, let's have a little look at the composition of ETH stakers and if they're in the money or out the money. So as you can see from this at current prices of around 1800 bucks, break even right now, this is where most people are. And a lot of people are actually underwater and a lot of people are in profit. If you just scroll down a little bit further, you can actually see 48% of participants are in the money, i.e. in profit on their ETH state. And then 51% are actually out of the money. So people like these guys here who staked when ETH was in the $4,800 range, they staked 32 ETH. I mean, if you actually did that, what would you be doing right now if it was coming to the 12th of April? Would you be unstaking that ETH and looking to lock in a fat loss or are you more likely to just maybe keep it staking or option two, which I think is the biggest alpha here, use a liquid staking derivative instead. So in terms of these LSDs, there's kind of the composition here. So where have people been staking? Well, as you can see from the top there, Lido Finance has over 5.6 million staked Ether with it. So the biggest LSD there is. Unknown then is number two. These will be all the solo stakers. 4.2 million, quite interesting. Then we have the big three centralized exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance for ETH staking. Add up all those numbers, it's still less than Lido Finance. So what we can determine here, Lido Finance has a big say in things. And then we have the likes of Rocket Pool ETH, Frax ETH, and others in the mix here. Dejan Spartan posted this, and I think this is quite an obvious thought. He says, watching the ETH withdrawal queue, i.e. in Mark's previous thread we looked at then, is probably just pure noise. He says, I expect massive withdrawals, but mainly people moving from private or staking as a service into LSDs. There is now a bit of a opportunity cost of not utilizing an LSD. He says, as the more universally these LSDs are accepted, the more utility that particular variant has. And what we've actually been seeing is that with the likes of STETH from Lido, RETH from Rocketport, FraxETH, and others, they've been doing things like bribing gauges. You may have seen bribes going on Curve, on Balancer, and other places, and then getting the integration of, say, STETH or RETH into loads of DeFi protocols. So it seems pretty obvious that if there are large ETH withdrawals, it's probably just people moving from, say, solo staking into an LSD, as there is opportunity cost for not doing this, and people love to maximize the value out of their assets. So I, in particular, will be looking at how these market caps start to shake up. As you can see, there's around $11 billion worth of SD ETH currently and around half a billion dollars of R ETH and then 250 mil and 150 mil of Frax ETH and state Frax ETH there as well, which provides one of the best APRs on state ETH. So I think this is the area to be looking at and I think we'll see some big booming growth within this space as it is just so easy to stake your ETH with these guys or even just buy up some of these assets. I can just buy our ETH on the open market rather than buy ETH directly. And then I'm getting all the value accrual of the staking rewards within our ETH as well. As you can see, it trades at a premium to the ETH price. 
Now there could be a movement here as well with people exiting Lido, but there's kind of a twofold effect here. They might exit because things are a bit slow, but you also can't exit your coins either straight away. So staked ETH withdrawals through Lido need to wait until early May. This is gonna have a big impact. As we saw, five point something million Ethereum's are staked with Lido. But if you can't withdraw your staked ETH from Lido, well then there's not gonna be a huge impact from day dot. Investors who have staked their staked ETH through Lido, the dominant liquid staking platform, will have to wait until early May to withdraw their funds, according to a Lido protocol developer known as CADMIL. This is due to the V2 upgrade. So them being a little bit slow here might leave a bit of a bad taste in investors' mouths, but also the doomsday scenario of everyone trying to flood the exit gate straight away. Well, 5.5 million of the staked Ethereum are with Lido, and so that isn't moving for like another month. Then we have an update here from Rocket Pool with RETH. They have the Atlas upgrade coming on the 18th of April, which will increase protocol efficiency, higher node operator rewards, and greatly boosted RETH capacity, a 3x in capacity. So as you can see here, there's around half a billion dollars in market cap of RETH. I expect this to go up quite a lot, and we could see this eat the market share of Lido to some degree. So all eyes on the price for the LSDs in my opinion. Do I think Ethereum is bullish or bearish going into this event? Well, if we saw a huge run up in the ETH price, Going into this event, I would have been like, yeah, it's definitely going to be a sell the news. Typically, events in the crypto space are sell the news, but I think around this one, it might just be a bit of a nothing burger. So as you can see from the USD versus ETH chart here, the 2K level is quite an obvious one as a point of resistance. And we're kind of coming up towards that region right now. That was the kind of May breakdown level. Q2 of 2022, we came out from 2K and then really dumped from there. So 2K is probably capping the price for right about now, and we won't see a resolution above this until after the upgrade takes place obviously but whether we get a nasty rejection from this kind of region as well yet to be seen but if we spin it onto the ETH BTC chart there you can see that it has been holding its rate around here 0.06 which is six percent of a Bitcoin per ETH but you could argue look it's been rejected from these kind of highs it is definitely sloping down are these the kind of lows around here somewhere in the 0.055 region maybe so that would be kind of the bear case here ETH BTC ratio continues to slide maybe we come down into this ratio once again but the truth around this is that nobody knows so you're going to get differing opinions on the bullish side and the bearish side all round but we'll just have to see how this all plays out and I think that's the most interesting thing here just to see what happens and see how the market reacts to this this is a huge fundamental change for Ethereum the LSDs in my opinion are the play but when we have Ethereum chalking off another item on the roadmap, making it a full POS chain, actually allowing for the withdrawals of those state assets. Well, I think the institutional investors will be sniffing around ETH more so post Shanghai once this update has been completed successfully. And it should happen successfully, but fingers crossed that it does all go well anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed making it. Smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.